Hello and welcome to this lecture series on physics of semiconductor devices. The series is based on this textbook, Essentials of Semiconductor Device Physics. And in this first lecture, we're going to cover our objectives, the required background, give an overview of the main topics and content. So as implied by the name, our main objective is to understand the physics underlying the operation of electronic devices. So there are many examples of electronic devices like diodes, LEDs, solar cells, and transistors. Now the beauty of electronic devices is that they are based on the same kind of element, which is called a PN junction. For example, diodes are PN junctions, LEDs are PN junctions, solar cells are PN junctions, and transistors are two PN junctions. So, if we understand the physics of PN junctions, we will already have understood the physics of diodes, LEDs, and solar cells, and we will be very well placed to understand the physics of transistors and other uh, electronic devices. So, our major goal is to understand the physics of PN junctions. So, to do that, we're going to cover chapters 1 to 3 of the textbook, and chapter 1 gives the necessary background, chapter 2 describes the physics of, sem of semiconductors, and chapter 3 describes the physics of PN junctions, and which leads to the famous Shockley equation, which we, we will derive in this course. And in a future lecture series, I intend to cover chapters 4 and 5, which deals with solar cells and transistors. Now let me say a few words about the background that is assumed for this course. Since this is an introductory course, we do not assume much background. Basically, we need a little bit of electrostatics, but only the very basic concepts like what is an electric field, what is an electrostatic potential, and also a bit of calculus, but again, very simple. Basically, the most sophisticated tool we're going to use is a Taylor expansion. But even if you do not know what is a Taylor expansion, it should be fine as well. Now, let me be clear about the background I am not assuming. So, as we're going to learn, this course depends heavily on statistical physics. But I do not assume any background in statistical physics. We're going to cover all the necessary content in this course. And we also need a little bit of quantum mechanics that we also cover along the way, but the bulk of it is statistical physics. Now let me give you an idea of why we need statistical physics in this course. So remember that our main goal is to understand the current versus voltage relationship in a PN junction. And this relationship is captured by Shockley equation, which I'm showing here and which we will, we will derive in this course. I is the current, V is the voltage, and this is a plot of Shockley equation. Now let's take a look at what Shockley equation entails when we use a PN junction or a diode in a circuit. So this is the symbol for a PN junction. This is the P side, this is the N side. We're going to discuss that late in later lectures. And in this drawing here, I am supposing that the P side has a higher voltage than the N side. So that means that the voltage is positive. So we are in this region here of Shockley equation, positive voltage and positive current. So this is what we call a forward bias configuration. So when the junction is forward bias, then the current increases exponentially with the voltage. And that means that the junction, the diode, conducts very well when it is forward bias. But if the voltage is higher on the N side than on the P side, then we are operating in this region here. We have a very, very uh, low current, which means that in this condition, which we call reverse bias, so negative voltage is reverse bias, and in this condition, the junction behaves essentially as an open circuit. And this is usually called the rectification property of diodes, which is just a way of saying that the current in reverse bias is very, very low, but the junction conducts very well 
a forward bias. So it behaves as a short circuit in forward bias and as an open circuit in reverse bias. The physics underlying this behavior of PN junctions, they are governed by the Fermi level. So this is a, a parameter of statistical physics which has two major physical meanings, and both of them are very important. One meaning is that the Fermi level is the electrochemical potential, and the second meaning is that the probability of an orbital to be occupied depends on the Fermi level. Now let's begin by taking a look at the meaning of the Fermi level as the electrochemical potential. So as we're gonna learn in this course, there's a very important principle in statistical physics which states that the Fermi level is constant in thermodynamic equilibrium. And we're going to learn why that is true. And this principle is very important to understand the physics of PN junctions. So we're going to see later in the course that the band structure of a PN junction, which is a drawing of the energy levels, it looks like that. It is bent in the middle. And the reason why it is bent and why it looks like that it, it all depends on the fact that the Fermi level is constant across the junction when it is in equilibrium. So, of course, it's very important to understand why the Fermi level is constant in thermodynamic equilibrium. And as we're going to learn, the reason why it is constant is intimately connected to the notion of the Fermi level as the electrochemical potential. Now let me give you an idea of what this electrochemical potential is about. So let's suppose that we have a circuit with a battery that gives uh, an electrostatic potential difference delta V and we connect a resistor with resistance R. So we know that there will be a current and this current will be given by the ratio of delta V to R and this is called Ohm's law. So this type of current, which is caused by, the, by an electrostatic potential difference, we say that this is a drift current. So we can say that an electrostatic potential difference causes a drift current. Now, recall that according to Ohm's law, the relationship between the drift current and the electrostatic potential difference is linear. If we plot the drift current against the voltage, we get a line. But as we've just seen, the relationship between current and voltage in a PN junction is highly nonlinear. This is not a line. So if this relationship is not linear, that must mean that there's something other than Ohm's law governing the physics of PN junctions. And that is indeed the case. In PN junctions, there is a new kind of potential called the chemical potential, which is different than the electrostatic potential. And a chemical potential difference causes a diffusion current, which is a new type of current. A drift current is a current caused by a force. In this case, the electric field is causing a force in the charge which is making the move. And this force, the electric, the electric field, is captured by an electrostatic potential difference. So an electrostatic potential difference is a way of describing the presence of an electric field. But there is no force causing a diffusion current. A diffusion current is not a current caused by any force. It's a current that appears when there is a, a gradient in the concentration of charges, and this gradient in the concentration of charges is captured, is described by a chemical potential difference. So in the same way that an, an electrostatic potential difference causes a drift current, a chemical potential difference, in other words, a gradient in the concentration of charges, causes a diffusion current. So in PN junctions, there are two types of potential, a chemical potential and electrostatic potential, and two types of current, the drift current and the diffusion current. And the sum of the chemical and the electrostatic potential, in other words, the total potential, 
is the electrochemical potential and the Fermi level is the electrochemical potential. This is one of the reasons why the Fermi level is so important in the physics of PN junctions. Now, as an example, recall that we saw a little earlier that the, PN, the band structure of a PN junction looks like this. It is bent in the middle, and the reason why it is bent is that there is an electric field in the PN junction, and we're going to learn later in this course where this field comes from. But now I, wanna, I want to bring to your attention that there is an electrostatic potential difference associated with this electric field. This electrostatic potential difference is this V0 term, and the height of the bending is a measure of this electrostatic potential difference. So the potential, the electrostatic potential on the P side is not the same as the electrostatic potential on the end side. These two sides are at different potentials, and the electrostatic potential difference between these two sides is V0. But if we plug a voltmeter across the PN junction, we do not measure this V0. Uh, in other words, we do not measure the electrostatic potential difference. The measure we get, the reading, is zero. And the reason why this happens is that a voltmeter does not measure only electrostatic potential difference. It measures a total potential difference. In other words, it measures the difference between the Fermi level on both sides, and the Fermi level is constant across the PN junction. That's why we get a zero reading. So without understanding properly what is the Fermi level and the role it plays in the PN junction, we cannot even understand why we cannot measure the electrostatic potential difference between the two sides with a voltmeter. And as a a last example of the role of the uh, electrochemical potential. As we're going to learn in this course, when the junction is forward biased, so when the voltage is higher on the P than on the end side, then we do measure an electrostatic potential difference. This is the potential across the PN junction. But now the electric field is very small. It, we can even consider that it vanishes. The band, the band structure is almost flat now. The bending is very subtle. But now there is a potential reading. The voltmeter gives a reading. So the nature of this reading cannot be electrostatic potential. It must be some other kind of potential. In this case, is a chemical potential. So we are reading a voltage difference across the PN junction, but the nature the physical nature of this difference is not electri the electric field, is not an electrostatic potential difference, but a chemical potential difference. The other very important physical meaning of the Fermi level uh, has to do with the probability of an orbital to be occupied. So recall that atoms have orbitals, and uh, these orbitals are the physical states the electrons can be in. So in the same way, semiconductors also have orbitals, and the probability that these orbitals are occupied by an electron is given by the famous Fermi-Dirac distribution. So as we're going to learn, the Fermi-Dirac distribution gives the probability of an orbital to be occupied we're going to derive this distribution in our course, and we're going to learn that it depends on the Fermi level. So the Fermi level is also associated with the probability of these orbitals to be occupied. And later on, we're going to use the fermi dirac distribution to obtain the concentrations of charge carriers in semiconductors, which is one of the most important results for the physics of PN junctions and electronic devices in general. OK, so let's take a brief look at the content. So we're going to begin with chapter one, which covers the essential concepts of statistical physics. We're going to begin with basic notions. Then we're going to learn the notion of thermal equilibrium, the partition function, and that will lead to the main 
topic, which is the chemical and electrochemical potentials, in other words, the Fermi level. Then we're going to derive the Fermi theory distribution, find the expressions for drift and diffusion currents, and conclude this part with the derivation of the continuity equation. Then we move on to the theory of semiconductors. We begin with a phenomenological description of band theory. Then we're going to learn that there are two types of charge carriers in semiconductors that are electrons and a new type of carrier, uh, which we call holes. Then we're going to calculate the concentration of these charge carriers uh, and also learn the very important concept of density of states. And we're going to find the Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductors. And finally, we're going to describe the doping process and how it affects the Fermi level and the concentrations. And in chapter 3, we begin the analysis of PN junctions. So we begin with the PN junction in equilibrium. We discuss the properties qualitatively. Then we move on to a more mathematical description. Then we move to systems out of equilibrium. In other words, to the concept of quasi-Fermi levels, followed by a qualitative analysis of the PN junction out of equilibrium and conclude with a mathematical analysis leading to the derivation of Shockley equation. So I hope you're going to enjoy this course, and I will see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.